Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today's travels have taken me down the research rabbit hole into a unique grouping of images that you may know, and I'm gonna show you one here, which is gonna tell the story right away. A unique grouping of images that feature soldiers, all Confederate soldiers, and they're posed with a placard. Upon that placard is the, are the words, Jeff Davis and the South, exclamation point. This was a popular phrase during the early part of the war, especially in Mississippi, which was President Jefferson Davis's home state. Now, this group of images has not been researched uh, in any considerable way since the early 1990s. So I'm working on a project right now with a few others for the next issue of Military Images Magazine to shine a little bit of light on what we now know about these photographs. Back in the 90s, when the last bit of analysis was done, there was only about seven images known now there's close to 30. There's a lot more to learn. This morning, I was focusing my attention on this particular image of Henry Augustus Moore of the 15th Mississippi Infantry. This is the classic Jeff Davis in the South photograph where the soldier is posed with a large Bowie knife or an artillery short sword. In this case, Moore is holding that short sword. Now, as part of the research, I have a master spreadsheet that I'm working through, and that spreadsheet includes multiple columns, and I'm going through and confirming bits of information about all the individuals that are identified and listed on that spreadsheet. One of the columns is when the soldier mustered out of the service. Sometimes that muster out date is when they died in the service. And tragically, that's the case here with Private Moore of the 15th Infantry. According to the summary that's on the uh, official page for this photograph on the Library of Congress, which is where this image resides, it's part of the Tom Lillenquist collection, the summary states, and I'm going to read it to you directly, it says Private Henry Augustus Moore, the 15th Mississippi, 15th Mississippi Infantry, quote, died from wounds suffered in the Vicksburg campaign in 1863. So as I was going through the primary source information, including his military service record, I discovered there was only two files in his military service record, and that's minimal. Uh, normally, there are multiple pages. When you only have one or two, it's a pretty clear sign that the soldier did not last very long in the service, or there's some clerical error. In this case, he did not last long in the service. That file that has his basic information says um, that he was uh, the reporting period is April 30th to August 30th of 1862. It has him enlisting uh, in May of 1862 and then has him dying August 14th, 1862 at Water Valley, Mississippi. So that raised a question mark for me because the death date of August 14, 1862 does, doesn't really connect to the Vicksburg campaign, unless it's early on in the Vicksburg campaign. Uh, but it's not the Vicksburg campaign that I think of that ended with the surrender of the city in 1863. Uh, Water Valley, Mississippi, the place of his death, caught my attention because the company in which he served, Company F, was originally known as the Water Valley Rifles. So Water Valley was his hometown and the namesake of the local militia company that became Company F of the 15th. So armed with this information and a big question mark to try to resolve his death date and the circumstances of his death, 
I did some researching uh, and discovered a, help, a few helpful resources, uh, particularly Roland, Dunbar Roland's uh, Mississippi rosters and a few other notations. And what I ultimately discovered is that Henry A. Moore, he did not die of wounds during the Vicksburg campaign in 1863. He died of a malignant fever contracted very early in the Vicksburg campaign in that summer of 1862. So uh, now that I've got several primary source and uh, early source records, this would be into the early 1900s, that document him dying of fever in August of 1862, the question becomes, now what do you do? What's the next step? Because there has to be a library of Congress record that gets changed. So in this case, because I know Tom Lillenquist, I simply sent him an email and um, showed him all the information that I found. I outlined to him what I'm sharing with you now. And uh, that email is probably in his inbox right now waiting to be answered. Normally, Tom is great about sending along this information to the staff at the Library of Congress for their action. The normal next step will be that I'll receive an email from the Library of Congress staff, uh, perhaps asking for more information, clarification, or telling me that they're going to go ahead and make the change. So the library is typically very responsive uh, to making changes, especially when they're correcting errors that are reported on the website. So that was my trip for this morning. And um, I'm hoping that we'll get the record for Henry Moore corrected relatively soon. So until we meet again, happy trails.